Hi and welcome to One Medicine. I'll be discussing about Pachyonychia congenita. Pachyonychia congenita is a very rare autosomal dominant disorder of keratinization. It was first described by Muller in 1904. Later, it was described, described by Judison and Lewandowski in 1906. To break down the word pachyonychia, pachy means thick or nychia is nails. So in this disorder, we see thick nails as one of the important clinical manifestations. It's a very rare condition. So only 5,000 to 10,000 cases have been reported worldwide. It's a disorder of keratinization. So there'll be mutations in the keratin genes here. Keratin 6A, 6B, 6C, keratin 16, 17 genes will be mutated here. It affects a number of ectodermal structures like nail bed, oral mucosa, palmoplantar skin, teeth, pilosebaceous units. Pachyonychia congenita is uh, associated with hypertrophic nail dystrophy because nails are the important structures affected here. Most problematic condition here is focal plantar keratoderma with severe incapacitating pain. That's one of the important features that we see in this condition. There are four types of pachyonychia congenita also. Pathophysiology, there will be heterozygous missense mutations or small insertions and deletions in the keratin genes. These mutations will disrupt the cytoskeletal function. Keratin 6A is found in the oral mucosa and nails, keratin 17 in the pilosebaceous units. Clinically, we see three main features that is toenail dystrophy, plantar keratoderma that is thickening of the palms and soles, uh, mostly soles here, plantar keratoderma and plantar pain would be present. In toenail dystrophy, there will be thickened toenails, there will be hyperkeratosis of the nail blade, that is subungual hyperkeratosis would be present, they will look like horse hoof. They present uh, during the first to nine years of life, keratin 6A mutation is seen here. Nail plate also is involved wherein it is hard, lusterless and thickened with uh, thickening mostly present at the free margin of the nail. So if this is the nail, if this is the free margin, there will be thickening present at the free margin of the nail. The nail plate is firmly adherent to the underlying nail bed and in the underlying nail bed we find horny debris being present. The nails would be so thickened that they'll appear as omega shaped nails. Toes, thumb and index finger are the commonly affected nails here. Along with the thickening, there will also be paronychia with candidal and staphylococcal infections that can be seen. And all of these nail lesions will increase in summer. Coming to plantar keratoderma, that is thickening of the soles. Calluses, fissures, thickening skin would be seen here. Thick yellow keratosis are seen on the pressure sites. It develops in early childhood when the, when the child starts walking. Because as the pressure keeps on increasing, the plantar keratoderma also keeps increasing and the pain will be also associated with it on the pressure points. Keratoderma is worse on the soles. Palmar lesions also occur and palmar lesions mostly seen in individuals who have occupational constant occupational trauma. It will manifest as persistent large calluses on weight-bearing areas associated with blisters. Now, these blisters will cause pain. Power plantar hyperhidrosis would be also present. Fissuring and secondary infection can be also seen. Along with that, there are varicose lesions seen on the elbows, knees, popliteal fossa and ankles. So here you can see the focal on the pressure points, you can see the thickened skin, the keratoderma is being present. Here is the thickened subungual hyperkeratosis, thickened nails, dystrophic nails seen here. Plantar pain, painful blisters occur on the soles and they cause plantar pain. They will occur on the palms also sometimes. Uh, that will be so severe that it will impact the quality of life. Sometimes patients uh, will be on regular use of analgesics and they will be bound to the wheelchairs. It will be so severe. Along with these other features like we can find follicular hyperkeratosis of the knees and elbows, oral leukokeratosis that is white colored plaque would be formed on the tongue or cheeks or lips. Palmar plantar hyperhidrosis would be present. There are certain cysts and natal teeth which are present. Cysts can be epidermal cysts and steatocystum or multiplex can be present. Natal teeth would be the teeth would be present at birth only. This might lead to trauma and laceration of the infant's tongue. And also it might lead to uh, injury to the mother's breast during breastfeeding. And important is there is also a risk of aspiration here in the infancy. Other lesions like the oral leukocrisis that I just described, that is patchy white thickened areas of tongue and oral mucus would be present. They will resemble candidiasis, so you have to differentiate from that. If these oral lesions extend beyond the oral mucosa, if it goes into the larynx, they can be associated with hoarseness of voice and respiratory obstruction also. Alopecia, angular chelitis, corneal dystrophy are the other features of pachyonychia congenita. If keratin 17 is mutated, steatocystum or multiplex, sebaceous cysts and natal teeth are seen. So if the keratin 17 is the gene which is affected, then these features are also seen along with the classical three features. So steatocystum or multiplex, sebaceous cysts and natal teeth are present in 17 mutation. If keratin 6C is mutated, then milder form of the disease is seen. So here is the oral 
thickened plaque. This is the oral leukokeratosis. On the dorsum of the tongue, we can see whitish colored plaque present. Here is the thickened nails, the soles with the keratoderma and the papules present here, the, the cystic lesion, the epidermal cystic lesions present. You can appreciate the omega shaped nail much better here. Here again the PPK, the oral leukokeratosis, the cysts here and the blisters on the sole. There are four types as I told you. Type 1 is called as Judson Lewandowski syndrome. Here there will be mutation in keratin 6A and 16 would be mutated here. There will be symmetric hyperkeratosis of the palms and soles along with hyperheterosis. Okay, so symmetric uh, hyperkeratosis of the palms and soles uh, that is PPK along with hyperhidrosis they will have. There will be painful paranoia present. And also toenail dystrophy would be present with follicular keratotic papules on the knees and elbows and oral leukokeratosis. Uh, some extending into the nasal, laryngeal, esophageal and tympanic mucosa also. In the type 2 type which is called as murray jackson lawler syndrome, there will be mutation in the 6B and 17 genes here. So here we see natal teeth, pylosebaceous cysts, pilite orti, unruly hair, bushy eyebrows, hoarseness of voice, pseudocystoma multiplex would be present along with PPK and other features. Type 3 type is called a Schaffer Bronner syndrome. Here, the, the types which we saw in type 1, all of these features that is PPK, hyperhidrosis, painful paranoia, and toenail dystrophy with follicular keratotic papules, oral leukokeratosis, and extending in beyond that, along with uh, corneal dyskeratosis and cataract, along with eye manifestations, will be found in type 3. Type 4 type is called as Pachyonychia tarda. It is a late onset after second or third decade of life, it will start. That is called type 4 type. There are certain unusual presentations of Pachyonychia congenita also. Like sometimes it won't present at birth or soon after birth. It can be seen in the fifth decade of life. That is late on the type is there. Then Pachyonychia congenita with only nail involvement is seen. No other organ involvement. Only nails can be involved. And Pachyonychia congenita with B-cell lymphomas have been so, uh, seen. And only with uli hair in a 10-month-old infant has been reported. And oral lesions like with medial rhomboid glossitis also has been found. Investigations we do here is the histopathological examination that will show us gross hyperkeratosis with alternating orthokeratosis and parakeratosis. There will be thickened skin basically. The layers of the epidermis will be thick. So, there will be acanthosis with patchy hypergranulosis. Malformed keratohyaline granules are also present here. In electron microscopy, we see tonofilament aggregates demonstrate intermediary filament disorder here. Mutational analysis also can be done. Oral biopsy needs to be done to differentiate it from candidiasis, leukoplakia or cancer. And microscopy of the nail clippings also needs to be done to differentiate from candidal or fungal onychomycosis from paronychia. Differential diagnosis includes Clostin syndrome, mutation of Frizzle 6 gene. We also have Olmsted syndrome which can present similarly and steatosystem or multiplex and other causes you have to differentiate it from. Management is by mechanical reduction of the hyperkeratosis of nails by filing, cutting or grinding or soaking it. So, you reduce the thickened palms and soles basically here. Attention to foodwear needs to be done because patient has got severe pain on the pressure sites mostly. So, you give a soft rubber footwear and uh, it will reduce the blistering and callosities and it will reduce the friction basically. So, blistering and callosities would reduce then. So, rubber based food molds have to be given. Good oral hygiene has to be maintained. Gentle brushing needs to be done. For cysts, surgical removal or incision and drainage can be done. For mild keratoderma, you can give emollients, keratolytics with salicylic acid, lactic acid or urea, which are all keratolytics. And oral vitamin A and E supplementation can be done if there is keratotic lesions. Topical retinoids can be given like tretinoin. Systemic retinoids like isoretinoin, etretinate also can be given. Hyperhidrosis has to be treated to reduce the sweating here and also it will reduce the blistering. We also have another treatment called small interfering RNAs designed against unique sequences in the K16 gene that can be tried. Rapamycin and analogs have been given, uh, which selectively inhibits the expression of the inducible keratin uh, 6A in the human keratinocyte. So, it will inhibit the 6A keratin expression. So, that can be given. Both oral and uh, topical rapamycin is underway. The, the, it's, it's in trial still. So, these are the treatment options available for Pachyonychia congenita. As, uh, as such, the disease is not life-threatening, but it will impact the quality of life very much. So, that's why it's very important to treat it and give a symptomatic relief to the patient.